Hi guys, JM here from Just Read JM and welcome back to my channel. So I've been receiving a bunch of new book mail lately and it's for different kinds of reasons. Some books were sent to me by publishers for review, some were gifted to me by my friends, and some books I just bought on a whim because why not? And I recently turned 24, I celebrated my birthday last November 1st, and honestly, what's be what's a better what, what better reason is there to splurge on books than you're celebrating a birthday, right? So anyway, this whole video is about my birthday book haul. So I feel like I'm actually cheating, but just to let you guys know, some of these books I've had for a while now, but I haven't posted about them yet, so I thought it would be a great idea to just combine everything, consolidate everything into one video so I can talk about everything and paulit ulit ako. So to keep this video organized, I'm going to be talking about the books in segments. So the first segment I will be talking about are the books that I won from giveaways. I won two. Next are the books that I bought from the Manila International Book Fair. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, that was last September. I still haven't posted my haul yet, so I might as well include the books that I bought in this video. The third segment will be about the books that I bought from the October Fields Fest event hosted by Romance Class last October at The Loft, Ortigas. The fourth segment will be about the books that I was gifted or the books that I borrowed from my friends. And the last segment will be about the books that I bought with my own money for my birthday. Okay? So the first book that I will be talking about is I Wish You All the Best written by Mason Deaver. This book is actually a prize that I won from a Twitter giveaway hosted by upcoming debut novelist Alexia Dao. So I Wish You All the Best is about Ben DeBacher, a non-binary teen who was recently thrown out of their house after coming out to their parents as non-binary. And Ben is forced to live with their sister and her husband who Ben hasn't even met yet all while trying to keep a low profile in school and trying to keep their anxiety disorder in check, Ben meets Nathan Allen, a funny charismatic student who acts as a guide and friend to Ben. So I've heard nothing but high praises for this debut novel and so I'm very much looking forward to meeting Ben and Nathan sometime soon. And please be sure to add Alexia Dow's upcoming novel called The Sound of Stars to your Goodreads shelf and have it pre-ordered as soon as possible. It comes out February 2020. So the next book that I will be talking about is a hardcover copy of Spin the Dawn written by Elizabeth Lim. This is another giveaway prize that I won from Twitter when Shalea of Shut Up Shalea hosted a Twitter chat when she hosted the blog tour for Spin the Dawn earlier this year. And like I've said, I was lucky enough to win a copy. So like I've mentioned, I already read Spin the Dawn earlier this year thanks to Penguin Random House International and I absolutely adored reading this magnificent work of art. So Spin the Dawn tells the story of Maya Tamarin, an aspiring seamstress who dreams of becoming the imperial tailor of Alandi. But since she's born female, all she's supposed to hope to achieve is to find a good man to marry. But when her father is summoned by the palace to join this fierce competition to create magnificent dresses and accessories fit for royalty, Maya has no choice but to pose as one of her brothers and take her father's place in the contest. Pitched as Mulan meets Project Runway, this magnificent book had me on the edge of my seat waiting in anticipation for what's going to happen next. Since I already have a review of this on my blog, I don't want to go into too much detail about it. So I will link my review to this wonderful book in the description box below. Check it out. So the next couple of books are ones that I bought from the Manila International Book Fair. And the first of them being a signed copy of Frank Lee in Love written by David Yoon. So this debut novel is about Frank Lee who is actually a second generation Korean American teenager who later on realizes that it's hard to fit into just one category, especially for someone who is hyphenated. Despite the strong implication that the title gives off, this is actually not a heavily romantic book. It's more coming of age and less lovey-dovey, which I have to admit kind of disappointed me, but that's not to say that I didn't enjoy reading this book because I did. 
I like the fact that this book focuses on so many important topics, especially for teens like young love, life, and the fact that it's short and so it must be lived fully and be enjoyed. I like how basically the first half of this book focused on the fake dating trope, which happens to be one of my most favorite tropes in romance. And I knew that no one was coming out of that arrangement unscathed, which, I'm not gonna lie, made the whole narrative a lot more interesting, at least in my opinion. The second part of this book focused on a self-discovering journey that Frank went on, where he soon realized and accepted that he will never be able to fit into just one category. I also appreciated the way that the author was able to incorporate the fact that the future is unfamiliar and it's uncharted, and I think it's a topic that most teenagers should be aware of. Overall, Frankly in Love was such an enjoyable book to read, although I wasn't able to fully connect with and relate to Frank, seeing that I'm not Korean-American, I'm a full-blooded Filipino. I still believe that a lot of readers could learn a thing or two from Frank Lee and his story. I have not reviewed this online yet, but I am going to give this 3.75 to 4 stars. Not bad for a debut. Also, can I just say how much I admire the marketing team behind Frankly in Love? They made book trailers and their efforts in trying to promote and create pre-publication buzz for this book is admirable. So hats off to you, Penguin Team. The next book that I will be talking about is The Right Swipe, written by Alicia Rai. This new romance novel from Avon Books is about two rival dating app creators who are at odds in the boardroom but are in sync in the bedroom. So this novel's heroine is named Rhiannon Hunter and the only thing that she swipes right to is her career and the occasional hookup. But when she meets former pro football player Samson Lima, sparks end up flying. But when Samson ghosts her only to resurface a few months later as a business rival, Ri becomes wary and for valid reasons of course. Ri is not sure if their second chance would end up giving her yet another heartbreak or will it lead to a happily ever after. Personally, I can't wait to find out. I've heard nothing but great stuff about this from romance readers all over the world and I for one can't wait to dive into it. So the next book that I bought from the Manila International Book Fair is a copy of Fix Her Up written by Tessa Bailey. This romance book is about Georgie, a young woman who turned her back on her family's renovation business to plan and host birthday parties for children, seeing that she's into making people laugh and smile. But being the town clown certainly does have its disadvantages since no one would take her seriously. No one wants to give her a chance and so she wants to fix her image. Enter Travis Ford, an ex-Major League Baseball player who had his dreams shattered after an accident. And since Travis is the best friend of Georgie's brother, uh, Travis doesn't have a hard time saying yes to Georgie's proposal of them pretending to date just so people from their town could finally take them seriously. Since I feel like Fix Her Up features people who build stuff, Ina and I categorize this book into hashtag Carpintero Romance. For those of you who are Filipino, you would know what that means. But Carpintero is basically the Tagalog or Filipino word for carpenter. And to be honest, I actually saw mixed reviews for this and so I'm fairly curious to find out what the hype is all about. I can't wait to read this. Hopefully, I'll get to read this sometime soon. And the last book that I bought from the Manila International Book Fair is Ryan and Grayson's Guide to Saving the World. This is actually a romance class novella published by Flickr, which is romance class's imprint for all things young adult. And this features two teens who are into comics and graphic novels, I believe. And since I'm a huge fan of graphic novels myself, I can't wait to read this one. I actually already met the author when I attended a romance class event before. And I had Catherine sign this to me. I'm not sure if it's focusing. And yeah, so basically, I'm very, very much excited to read this one as well. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Ina has already read it. And kung tama lang ako, she also loved it and so yeah I can't wait to read this one as well 
Up next are the books that I bought from the October Feels Fest event hosted by Romance Class and I bought three books from them. I bought Mango Summer written by Agai Lianera. I bought Scandalized written by Tara Frejas and also Play It By Ear also written by Tara Frejas. And unfortunately, I haven't had the time to research what these books are all about. But all I know is that they are written by talented authors and authors that I've already read from in the past. And so I'm very, very much looking forward to reading these as well. All I know about this is that other romance class readers have already read these and they loved it. And I'm sure I will love these as well. So this next segment is about the books that I were given and the books that I borrowed from my friends. And I only have two books, actually. And the first one I have here is an advanced reader's copy of The Gravity of Us written by Phil Stamper. This was given to me by my friend Hazel when she attended this year's book expo in New York. Just like in my previous video, uh, like I've mentioned, Hazel is such a sweet friend. She once again brought an art for me when she attended the convention and The Gravity of Us is a young adult novel perfect for fans of Adam Silvera and Becky Albertalli. And seeing that I'm a huge fan of both those authors, I'm very much looking forward to reading this as well. This particular debut is about two teen boys who get involved when their parents compete. I'm not sure if it's compete. All I know is that uh, both the main characters' parents are involved in a NASA mission to Mars. It's queer, it features space, and the cover's lovely. And so I'm very much looking forward to reading this as well. Uh, thank you so much to Hazel for grabbing this particular copy for me when you were at Book Expo. I love you and I'm so thankful. And the next book I have here is Time of Our Lives, written by Emily Wiberly and Austin Sigmund Broca, who just recently got married. Congratulations, you guys! This novel is about two teens who I believe are on their way to college. And from what I have heard from Gavin, this book, just like Frankly in Love, is more coming of age and less lovey-dovey. If I can remember correctly, both the main character and the love interest have different views in going to college. Um, one of them wants to stay close to home and one of them wants to venture out into going to a college that's far from home? Spider-Man! And I've had this for months now and I'm ashamed to say that I still haven't read it. But Gavin, if you're watching, I promise to return this when we meet each other again. Uh, thank you so much, Gavin, for lending this book to me. And now we're down to the last segment of this video. Uh, lastly, I will be talking about the books that I bought for myself for my birthday. I only have a few. <laughs> yeah, and the first book I have here is an exclusive collector's edition of The Sun is Also a Star uh, written by Nicola Yoon. This is exclusive to Barnes & Noble. Uh, I asked my friend Lyra to buy this for me uh, a couple of months ago, but at the time I told myself that I was buying it for me for my birthday, which is a cheat, but you can't blame me. And you have to have been living under a rock for the past three years to not have heard of this. The Sun is Also a Star is about Natasha, an undocumented Jamaican-American teenager who is about to get deported because of a dispute between her struggling father and the police. And it's also about Daniel, a second-generation Korean-American teenage boy who has to live with his parents, unending dreams and aspirations for him. Um, he's an aspiring poet and unfortunately, uh, his parents want him to follow a medical track for college. And The Sun is Also a Star happens in just under 24 hours. Uh, it's very lovely. It's already a movie starring Charles Melton and Yara Shahidi. So the reason why I wanted this particular edition is because of the additional content that it has. Um, other than the fact that it has uh, purple sprayed edges, it also has this letter that Nicola wrote for the ARC when it was first released to book bloggers. And it also has this Natasha and Daniel's map to New York. Um, it has this annotated special epilogue. I'm not sure if it's focusing. And for those of you who know me, y'all should probably know that The Sun is Also a Star is one of the best books that I have read in my life. And so I'm very, very much 
looking forward to having this on my shelf. Another reason why I wanted to buy this collector's edition of The Sun is also a star is because it looks fairly amazing when placed next to Frankly in Love. This next book is another favorite and it's a finished copy of Red, White, and Royal Blue written by Casey McQuiston. This is the author's new adult debut and I read this earlier this year and I adored it. Uh, I promised myself that I would read it in less than a month but I ended up reading it in a week because I really really enjoyed it. Red, White, and Royal Blue features Alex Claremont Diaz, the first son of the first female president of the United States, and His Royal Highness Prince Henry of Wales. A hate to love romance about queer love, royalty, politics, friendship, and what it means to have a royal duty, this particular book will squeeze your heart out until all it can feel is love. Seriously, you guys, this is the best book that I have read so far this year, and I really, really hope that you will consider giving this a chance. Check this out on Audible, check it out in Fully Book, check it out wherever. You guys, this book is literal fire. Uh, I recommend this to anyone who wants my book recommendations. It reads fairly quickly, and the romance is just. I love this. I really, really love this and I'm so looking forward to reading Casey McQuiston's other books. So unfortunately, we're down to the last book and it's a graphic novel and it is Pumpkinheads written by Rainbow Rowell and Faith Erin Hicks. So Pumpkinheads is about Deja and Deja, I'm not sure how to pronounce this, but this book is about Deja, Deja and Josiah, seasonal best friends who work in this pumpkin patch together. Um, they say goodbye every Halloween and they reunite every September 1st. But unfortunately, this Halloween is different. This is the last time that they will be working together. And Josiah is actually ready to feel melancholy about it. He's ready to just mope and feel sad about the fact that they're leaving for college. But Deja has a different plan in mind. She's proposing to spend their last shifts together with the bang, taste all the snacks, see all the sights, and maybe get Josiah to talk about the girl that he's been crushing on for three years. And I've heard nothing but great stuff about this. And I've been meaning to read more graphic novels this year. And so I'm very, very much looking forward to reading this as well. It's fairly thin and I'm sure this is just going to be a quick read. Uh, unfortunately, Halloween's already over. But I guess the season's still there. Yeah, so Pumpkinheads. And the last thing that I'll be talking about isn't a book. It isn't anything bookish. A friend who was in the United States purchased this for me and it arrived in time for my birthday and it is a deluxe album version of Taylor Swift's Lover. <laughs> you guys, you know me. I'm trash for Taylor Swift. I've been streaming Lover on Spotify ever since it came out and so I just thought it would be just right to have this particular version. And quick backstory, the reason why I bought version 4 is because it has the uh, final draft of the lyrics to All Too Well, which happens to be my most favorite Taylor Swift song. Uh, the first time I heard it, I full on cried during my commute. What can I say? I'm trash. But anyway, most of you already know this, but it has journal entries from Taylor Swift's diary. Obviously, it also has the CD and the lyric sheet and I'm just so, so glad to finally have this version of Taylor Swift's Lover. Unfortunately, my laptop doesn't have a CD-ROM, a DVD-ROM. I'm not sure what it's called, but... Yay, Lover! I can't believe I almost forgot about this. Um, I also won two Marvel comics from my friend Gavin when he hosted a Twitter, a random Twitter giveaway before the Manila International Book Fair. And I won uh, two first issues of Swordmaster. Um, this is... I'm not even gonna try. I don't know who wrote this. I don't know who draw this. But anyway, the first one I have here is the first issue of Swordmaster and the first issue of New Agents of Atlas. He's been recommending me to read graphic novels via Marvel Unlimited, which is this... I'm not sure if it's a subscription service for digital editions of the Marvel comics, but 
you guys are into comics, please be sure to check out Marvel Unlimited and connect with Gavin since he's a huge, huge fan of the comics. And yeah, so thank you so much to Gavin for hosting that giveaway and choosing me as the winner. I'm not sure if it if I'm worthy of these comics because like I've mentioned, uh, I want to read the Marvel comics based on the movies that were released, but I'm not sure where to start. So if you have suggestions, please do let me know in the comment section down below. So I'm sorry about the weird cut because I just realized that I'm very stupid. I literally just packed my equipment up only to realize a few minutes later that I forgot to talk about uh, the most important book that I have here in this haul. And it is this bound manuscript of Harley in the Sky written by Akemi Don Bowman. So Harley in the Sky is the story of Harley Milano, a young woman who dreams of one day becoming a trapeze artist. But since her parents doesn't approve of this dream and they would much rather have Harley go to school instead of uh, performing every night, Harley ends up betraying her family to join the rival circus where she is thrown into a life that is both brutal and beautiful. And I've been a huge, huge fan of Kemi Don Bowman ever since I read Starfish, her debut novel. And so I'm very much looking forward to meeting Harley and I also hope to be thrown into a reading experience that is both brutal and beautiful and once again thank you so much to the author Akemi Don Bowman and the Simon Pauls team for sending this my way. I can't wait to read it. Okay so I'm going to attempt something that a lot of booktubers have already done in the past but this is the first time I will be doing this so I'm not sure if I'm going to do it justice but I'm going to try to stack everything I have here so that I can show you in one shot. Uh, mommy. Hindi uh, yata siya kasha. Anyway, here's every... <laughs> so here's everything that I got for my birthday book haul. Yeah, so here's everything that I got for my birthday book haul. Ang bigat niya. And yeah, so thank you so much for checking this video out. Let me know if you've already read some of the books that I have here. Uh, let me know what you thought. Um, also, please. Uh, uh, up. I'm putting it down. Uh. So if you've already read some of the books that I have here, please do let me know via the comment section down below. Let me know what you thought of the books that you've read. And as always, thank you so much for checking this video out. So like I always say, um, I hope you'll give this video a quick thumbs up. It'll help me out a lot. But it's not a requirement. No pressure. Uh, and also please do subscribe to my channel and click on that bell button just so you'll get notified whenever I post new stuff. And yeah, that's basically it. Ang init. I'm so tired. Gusto ko na magpalit ng damit. And yeah, so thank you again for checking this video out. I hope you guys will have an amazing week ahead. And thank you. Until then, have courage and be kind. Bye! Uh, mommy. Uh.